You're gonna love these 10 budget-friendly outdoor DIYs. Hey there, it's Christina from the DIYMommy.com. The weather is getting so much nicer. I am so excited to spend more time outside hanging out with my girls, my husband, and my family and friends. I wanted to put together another video of 10 more of my favorite outdoor DIYs. If you're a longtime subscriber, you just might remember some of these. Let me know if you recognize any of them down in the comments below. These are all budget friendly. They range in extremely simple to a little more intermediate. Ready to DIY? Let's get started. For this first one, we're going to make a really simple log succulent planter. If you can find a log like I did where it's kind of rotting in the middle, it is ideal. Put a piece of painter's tape around the middle and then take any leftover paint you have on hand. I found this beautiful deep teal latex paint, my favorite, and paint on top of the painter's tape. If you have a hole in yours like I do, you might need to grab some scraps of wood and nail them to the bottom to make sure all of your dirt you're going to put in does not fall out. Once the paint is dry, you can remove that painter's tape and you have a really pretty paint dipped look. Now you're going to flip the planter right side up, put some sand in the bottom for drainage, and then put some potting soil in there as well. Now you can plant your favorite succulents. I'm planting some hens and chicks and I'm placing this on my porch. This is such a simple DIY and I love that it uses something that a lot of us might have on hand. For this next DIY, we are going to make a rustic lantern inspired by these ones, which range from $100 to $150 Canadian. I just used some 2x2 two two lumber. This is spruce lumber I found from my local home improvement store, and I'm using my miter saw to cut the pieces. For this one, you're going to use all 2x2 two two spruce wood and cut 11 pieces 7.5 inches long, 2 pieces 10.5 inches long, and 4 pieces 21 inches long. I do have this on my blog. I I will leave a link to it in the description box below so you can get all of these measurements and pin this for later. After you cut all of your pieces, you're going to take your favorite stain and stain them all. You could also paint this lantern as well. Next, grab some wood glue and a finishing nailer and arrange your first piece just like this with the shortest pieces in the middle, six of them, and then two medium pieces on each side. You're gonna put glue on either end of the short pieces and take your finishing nailer and nail them all in place just like this. Now take your long pieces, put some glue on the bottom and nail them to this bottom piece that you created. Take the other two long pieces and nail them to the other corners of your square. You do want to add wood glue to them before you nail them to make sure that they stay in place. Now you're going to take some more wood glue, add them to the remaining of the short pieces and place them in between the long pieces on top to create this lantern shape. You might notice that my stain did not go on well for these, but I did sand them at the end and it looks good in the end. You can also do a couple coats of stain to make it look a little bit more even. Now you can continue on adding wood glue and nailing those top pieces in place. For a cute little metal handle, I just used an old wire hanger and I cut it on the top and then I wrapped it around the top two sides of my wooden lantern. After this is finished, you have a pretty little lantern you can place on your front porch. In the fall, I like to add pumpkins and in the summer, I like to add candles and flowers. Now we're going to make a fringed umbrella inspired by this photo that I found. I could not find anything in my price range that looked like this, so I found this striped umbrella on Amazon. I will leave it in the description box below where you can purchase it, and I also found this fringe on Amazon as well. Take some hot glue. I like using the Gorilla hot glue because it really, really lasts. I made this umbrella a couple years ago and this fringe is still on. Place the glue all the way around the edge of the umbrella, push that fringe on, and you have a really expensive looking umbrella for hardly any money at all. I use this on my mom and dad's balcony and I think it looks so coastal chic. I love this umbrella. Now let's create a tiered herb planter. I used three different sizes of buckets. I found these metal ones at Dollarama. That's the dollar store here in Canada. Now you're going to want to drill a hole in the bottom middle of all the buckets to make sure that they drain well. 
Now fill your largest one with some potting soil, place that middle sized one in the middle just like this and kind of push it down a couple inches into the soil. Now put some potting soil in that one and then add the smallest one on top. Now you're going to plant all of your favorite herbs around the pots. I'm using a variety of my different favorites like rosemary, chives, basil, oregano and more. Place one herb in the top, three in the middle, and five or six in that bottom tiered section. This lasted me all summer long. It's really easy to water and it looks great on my front porch or in my garden. Now we're going to make an outside bar with a pallet. I had this one in my back field. We had some flooring delivered and I just gave it a really good clean with a power washer. Now you're going to take a miter saw and cut two two by six pieces that are the same width as the top of your pallet and three six inch long two by four pieces. I drilled the two by four pieces into the bottom of my pallet to act as feet. And then I also used some deck screws and drilled those two by sixes into the top of the pallet to create create a nice little bar area. Now take a sander and sand everything as much as you want. I wanted my bar to look a little bit rustic so I didn't sand it a lot. Now you can create a whitewash with one part water to one part latex paint and you can brush that all over your palette. After you do that you can just take a rag and wipe that away to create a whitewashed effect. I love that this shows the wood grain through but it gives it a nice fresh look with the white paint. After this is all dry, you have a really simple upcycled bar. I love to put this by our little pool for refreshments and snacks. Now I wanted to show you how to make outdoor drop cloth drape curtains and a curtain rod out of pipe. Now I didn't have a video for this because this DIY is six years old, but I love it so much. These curtains lasted for years and I really wanted to show you how to make them. The first step is you'll need a cotton poly blend fabric drop cloth that's about nine by 12. You'll also need some curtain clips to hang the drape or you can use ribbon to make some ties at the top. You're also gonna need some black metal pipe fittings to make the curtain rod and you can find that at your local home improvement store. For ribbon tabs, cut seven pieces of ribbon per panel that are about nine inches long. You can fold those in half and sew them to the top of the drop cloth as shown. If you want to read all the written instructions for this DIY, I'm going to leave a link to this blog post down in the description box below. If you wish, you can decorate the edges of your drop cloth panels with ribbon. I used fabric glue for mine, but you could also sew those on. To make the industrial pipe curtain rod, you'll need two floor flanges, two 90 degree joins, two four inch joining pieces, and a piece of pipe long enough to hang within your drapes opening. And those are all plumbing pieces you can find at your home improvement store. You can also get those cut to size at a plumbing supply store. Screw the floor flange, four inch joining piece, and the 90 degree piece together as shown. And then you screw the center piece into the end pieces to make the complete curtain rod. Now you can attach the curtain rod to your porch or patio beam with screws through the holes on the floor flange. Then you can tie your drop cloth drapes to that pipe curtain rod and you have some really fun and long lasting outdoor drapes. Now let's make a beautiful light feature for your garden. I am using this dollar store watering can and I'm spraying it with some white spray paint. I wanted to make this look kind of like an old fashioned sort of container. After spraying it white, you can add some detail with some black paint around the edges and sort of make it look distressed with some little details. Now grab some string lights. These ones are quite long. They are on Amazon. I will link them down in the description box below and just fold them in about three foot long sections. You can kind of hook the top a little bit about an inch and then you can push those through the little holes at the spout of the watering can. You're going to want to make sure that your string lights are battery operated because what you can do is once you finish folding all of the pieces, you can wrap the excess fairy lights around the spout like this and just place that battery pack inside. Now get a planter hanging stake and place that in your garden, place that watering can on it, and then you can sort of arrange those strips of twinkle lights down into a plant below. 
I really love how this one turned out. It was so simple and it looks beautiful in my garden during the day and especially at night. Now let's make some pretty garden markers. I use some flat rocks for these ones. And all you need to do is write the word that you wanna paint on top of the rock with a pencil. And then take some acrylic or latex paint and a nice narrow brush and trace over the word. I'm just freehanding this, but you could also use a Cricut if you want to put on some vinyl, or you could print these out as well. After you write the word on, you can add some little embellishments freehand. I always like swirls and polka dots, so that is what I'm adding to this garden marker here. Once all of your paint is dry, you can take some exterior or outdoor Mod Podge and just put a coat of that over top so that your paint lasts nice and long. I made these six years ago and I can still read the words on them. They lasted perfectly and I think they look so beautiful in my garden. Now we're going to make a nice little skinny outdoor coffee table. I used some lumber that I had on hand for these and it's a really straightforward DIY. I will link the full tutorial and the DIY rustic bench free building plans down in the description box below. For this one, you're gonna cut four two by sixes, one foot four inches long, two one by threes to 11 inches long, two two by sixes to four foot three inches long, and two two by fours to four foot three inches long. I used a miter saw to cut all of my pieces. And then for the four one foot four inch long pieces, I cut an angle off of each side of the bottom. After all of my pieces were cut, I used this wood stain to stain all of the pieces to give them a beautiful weathered look. It's a lot easier to stain all of the pieces for this before you build it rather than after. Now I'm placing that smaller one by two piece over top of the angled pieces and putting everything together with deck screws. I'm using my drill for this to make it nice and quick. Now I'm attaching another one by two piece along the top and I'm drilling that top piece into the legs. I also angled each side of this piece here and I'm drilling in pilot holes and adding that to the front of the bench. This piece is optional, but I love that it gives it a really neat rustic look. This is fantastic on your porch as a skinny little coffee table, but it also looks great as a bench at the end of your bed as well. Finally, let's make some mosquito repellent luminaries using mason jars. I cut up some of my favorite citrus fruits, so I'm using some slices of lemon and lime for these. I placed one slice of each in three mason jars. Now you can take your favorite herbs. I'm using some sage and put a bundle in each of the jars as well. Next, you can fill the jars with water about two thirds full. Once you do that, you can take some of your favorite mosquito repellent essential oils. I'm using a few drops of lavender each in each one. I'm using some citronella and I'm using a couple drops of lemongrass in each one as well. I find that this combination repels mosquitoes quite well. Now you can take some tea lights and you can place one in each of the jars. Then you can set these out on your porch or patio during the spring and summertime. You can light up the little candles and not only do these look pretty, but I did find that three of these on my about 10 by 10 foot patio did a pretty good job of repelling the mosquitoes last summer. So I'm definitely gonna make these again this year. Thank you so much for watching this video today. I hope you enjoyed these 10 outdoor DIYs. Let me know down in those comments below which of these you liked the best or if you recognize any of these from past videos. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel for more DIY and decor ideas on a budget. If you like this video, I think you will love my 10 outdoor DIYs video from last year. I'm gonna leave it for you right up here.